So here I am at Best Bet in Jacksonville, Florida. I stopped here because it is halfway between the two places that I live, Florida and North Carolina. And uh, yeah, they had a live stream going on and I figured that, uh, yeah, why not hop in it? So today I'm gonna be playing a 2-5 deep stacked. I think it's at 1500 max. Uh, yeah, hopefully we win some big ones. Uh, hopefully uh, we run well and let's see what happens. So hope you guys enjoy this one. If you haven't already, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you guys want to. And uh, yeah, it's greatly appreciated. And not too much more to be said, guys. Let's get in there, mix it up, and hopefully win some pots. Excited and a little bit nervous as we sit down with $1,500 in our first two five deep stack live stream. We start off with a bomb pot, which always gets the nerves flowing a little bit. We each put in $25 and there's eight people at the table. So do the math, $200 of dead money in the middle for this one. We do look down at pocket nines though, which is a pretty good hand, but multi-way, you can never really like it that much. The flop does come down at jack eight queen with no flush draws, so we have nothing but a middle pair, but something that we do have is a bunch of blockers. Uh, basically, we double block the nuts, which is nine ten. It does check over to a player by the name of Justin. Justin throws out $75 with absolute air, and the player in the small blind eddy, which you'll see a lot of he makes the call. It folds to me, and I actually contemplate a raise as I bluff here, but being eight-handed, I think anyone could still have nine ten here. No one's going to be folding two pair or a set, so I just let it go, and we're off to pick a better spot. Not to be results-oriented, but if I did put in a raise, it actually would have been with the best hand, which is kind of comical, but uh, yeah, like I said earlier, just going to pick a better spot. In this next hand, we see an open from Justin, that same player that bluffed in the last hand to 30. We see a call on the button from Chips Ahoy, and we're in the small blind with Ace Queen. So definitely want to be putting in the raise on this hand, getting the action started off early, as this is, I think, the second or third hand in the night. I bump it up to $160, and unfortunately for us, well, I guess fortunately, they both fold. So there is a mandatory straddle in this game that I probably forgot to mention in the prior hand. So we're basically playing 2-5-10, which, you know, as you know, taking down dead money in this game can certainly add up, especially if there's a raise and a few calls. So we win $75 without even seeing a flop. This is actually one of the most eventful hands of the night, and it is within the first orbit. Eddie is in the plus one and opens it up to 50. Chips ahoy in the plus two calls. I have pocket four, so I'm going to call with the Rampage special. Hopefully I can make something happen. We see a few more calls from the player in the four seat, the player in the seven seat, and then also the player in the eight seat. So once again, as you guys can see, there is going to be a lot of ballooned pots in this game. And so far, a reoccurring theme that I'm noticing is a lot of just calling, not a lot of three betting and four betting. We're off to see a flop six ways where we flop bottom set. The flop comes out 10, eight, four, and this is probably one of the best situations you can ask for, multi-way and a balloon pot. Action checks over to the player directly to my right, and he decides to throw out a bet on the smaller side, especially multi-way. He throws out a bet to the tune of $130. Multi-way, this should almost always be a raise, but I do want to have some players involved with marginal holdings as I do see a lot of overcalling so far in this game. So I just make the call, and this is exactly what happens as we do see two calls behind me from the player in the four seat, and then we also see the initial aggressor, Eddie, decides to tag along as well. The trap is working. Hopefully we can see a good turn that we can allow us to pile some more money in, and fortunately for us, that is exactly what we get. We see the 10 of spades on the turn, literally the best possible card in the deck. Uh, maybe another four, but regardless, this turn is excellent. Unfortunately, action does check it to me though, so now I do need to be putting some money in this pot. As for sizing, I think I can either go small or around half pot here. The merits of going small will allow some naked ace of spades to continue. Obviously, any 10 and any flush is certainly going to continue, but once again, I believe a 10 and a flush will still continue if I bet almost any sizing. At the end of the day, I don't think you can go wrong with either bet, but I do ultimately elect to do a smaller sizing. I like to bet a little bit less than a third of the pot. I throw out $250, once again, targeting all the holdings that I mentioned prior, knowing that we certainly do have the best hand, and we definitely want to get called. Luckily for us, we don't have any sweat and we do get action immediately as the player directly to my left makes the call and the other two players decide to get out of the way. So we're off to see a river heads up, which comes another spade. The river is a deuce of spades. So it's a bit of an interesting spot. If he had a 10 in his hand, he obviously hates this card as now any spade is going to be beating him. But if he does have a hand such as like the ace of spades with the king of spades, maybe accompanied by a 10, he's going to be calling a very large bet. 
So at this point, I decided to just try to go for the max. Continues on the turn, has gotten there. Or so perceived have gotten there. Wow, it's an all-in from Harry. Yeah. That's exactly what you do there. At this point, there's not much to do other than pray that we get called. And uh, sure enough, he does go well into the tank. At this point, I'm kind of regretting the bet sizing because, once again, I was trying to target a ace or maybe a king of spades. But once he starts tanking, I'm almost always putting him on a 10, which most likely cannot call this bet. I try not to give off too much information by looking to the side. And as you can see, all he has now is a 7 high flush. So, I mean, obviously, this bet most likely is not going to work. But, uh, wait, uh, what's he doing? Is, is he grabbing chip? It, what? The chips get slid into the middle, and we show our full house. We go ahead and scrape in a $3,400 pot within the first orbit. This is literally the most ideal start to any session, and especially a live stream session that is relatively deep stacked. Sitting with $3,500, let's go after some more chips. As I'm scraping in the chips from the prior hand, we look down at two kings. Are you kidding me? We're literally getting blessed out here. I open up the action to $40 in the plus two position. We see a call from the hijack, the cutoff, and then the player on the under the gun straddle. So we're going four ways to a flop, which isn't really ideal with kings. The flop comes out not too great. The flop comes out jack and nine nine with two spades. Action checks to me and we do not have a spade in our hand. Action does check to me and this board just gonna hit the ranges a lot harder than mine and it'd suck if I bet and got raised on this board texture. I decide to check and pot control, but we do see a bet from the player directly to my left. He throws out $50 around a 30% pot size better so. Action's now on the cutoff, and he does something bizarre. He decides to min raise to $100. Eddie check calls $100, and I'm in such an odd spot. I have certainly underwrapped my hand, but I just don't really know what these players can be check calling with. There are a lot of flush draws, a lot of straight draws out there. And I think some players could have a jack. So regardless, I think my hand's just a little bit too strong to fold at the moment. And we do see a call from the player directly to my left as well. The turn's an absolute dud. It's a three of diamonds. And I check it over to the initial aggressor. And surprisingly, this time he checks it back. The river's an eight, which now the open-ended draw of queen 10 got there. But the flush draw did brick. Action does check it to me. And I contemplate doing a blocker bet for a while. But regardless, I think at this point, my best interest is just to get a cheap showdown. The player to my left decides to check it as well. And action's now on the player that min raised on the flop. He throws out $250. Action folds back to me. And this is certainly an interesting spot. Now we just have to risk $250 to win a pot of $817. With our exact holding, we are getting a great price. But this just seems so valuey. You have to think though. Will you ever really be min raising the flop with queen 10? Would you really be checking the turn with a nine? And I think the answer is just no. At the end of the day though, I think this hand just comes down to the strength of my hand and the price. So I make the call, not really loving it. And he, luckily for us, he does show jack 10. So that is a hand that we beat. And uh, yeah, I think we actually got the maximum on what is probably the scariest board possible for Kings. So we are definitely running well in this session so far. In this next hand, we see a cutoff player open up that action to 35. I'm in the big blind with 4-5 off, and I make a pretty loose call, considering that we are pretty deep stacked. So we're heads up to a flop, which is pretty good. The flop comes out 3-4-7 rainbow. We a middle pair and a gutter on a board that certainly favors my range more than his. He throws out a C bet that is slightly on the larger side. He throws out $55. I contemplate raising, but I think a call is fine. I make a call, and we're off to see a turn. The turn's definitely better for him. It's a queen of hearts, which also brings in a back to a flush draw. The graphics are a little glitched. I go ahead and check it over to him, and he bets $105. At this point, I think he's really weighted towards over pairs, the way he's played the hand so far. He might have picked up a back to a flush draw as well. In addition, he could also have a hand that easily contains a queen. I do have a five in my hand, and I could easily have the nuts where he really couldn't have the nuts. But with that being said, I don't think he's ever folding a flush draw or an over pair on this board. So I decide to peel one more and just make the call, playing my hand pretty conservatively. The river is an interesting one. It is a deuce of hearts. The backdoor flush does complete, and he is not done betting. Ivan decides to throw out $225. At this point, I think that raising is probably out of the question. If you picked up a flush, he's obviously never folding. I would have played my flop straights in sets a lot differently. So that being said, I just think I'm simply beat here. 
He's repping a narrow range, and I decide to let my cards go. And it was a good bluff by him because, as you can see, our pair of fours was good the whole time. Well played. In the sex hand, we are on the button with another premium. We looked down at two queens, and there's actually a limp and a cutoff open. I'm definitely going to be putting in a raise, and I think I settled a little bit on the smaller side. I raised it up to $175. I think I like a sizing around $200 to $225, a little bit better being on the button and with a raise before me. The player in the cutoff decides that all of his ships are going in the middle, and he is around $250 behind, and I pretty happily make the call. He is one of the tighter players at the table, but regardless, what am I going to do with queens for that sizing? Unfortunately for me, right after I make the call, I am aware that he has pocket kings, so we are definitely going to need some help in this one. King, ace, jack, two jacks, two tens. It looks like kings. Never beseech the dealer what not to do, because then he's going to do it. Yep. Without a doubt. It's a decent flop for kings. So far, so good. Okay. You got two outs. Kings looks good. Kings are good. Kings are good. Kings are, in fact, good, and we lose a little bit in this one. In the sex hand, I'm on the big blind, and it does fold to the button, and Eddie opens up the action to 75 with three deuce. The sizing's definitely big, and it certainly looks like a squeeze. We looked down at 10-7 suited, and I decided to put in the three bet to $300. Looking at his exact hand, obviously this braise is going to work, right? Yeah, you'd be surprised. We are not at a normal 2-5 game. This game has been very active, and sure enough, Eddie decides that his 3-deuce is good enough for a call. So we're going to get involved, and obviously I don't know he has 3-deuce at the time, but hopefully I can get a good flop. So we're going heads up to a flop out of position where I actually flop a pair. The flop is queen 7 9, and I decide to put in a C bet on the smaller side. I throw out $175, and luckily for us, no hard decisions. That is the end of this one, and he quickly releases. We're back for another bomb pot in this next one, and we have 7 4 of hearts. We flop a flush draw on 8 10 deuce, and action does check over to me. I'd prefer not to inflate the pot with a 7 high flush draw, so I check it. And the player in the four seat directly to my left decides to put out a bet around half pot. He rents $110. Well, that bet did not get too far. As the seat six player, he immediately raises it up to $400. It folds back around to me. And obviously, we could very well be up against a better flush draw. We're not doing well against sets. So with that being said, we could already be dead. So I think this is a pretty easy fold with only $25 invested. And we're off to see another one. Going to pick a better spot. Yeah, we pick up kings once again in the under the gun straddle. Eddie is in the small blind and he decides to raise it up to 50 with three dues again. I three bet to $200 and if he called the first time, he's I, assuming he's going to call this time considering it's suited. And that is in fact what he does. We're off to see a flop where you already know the ace magnets. The ace had to come out. He checks it over to me and I'm going to be calling a bet if he bets one. So why not just have continue the betting lead? I throw out a smaller size. I throw out $125. And it looks like Eddie has some intentions as he decides to float one. We're off to see a turn where it is a pretty good one. Now we pick up the nut flush draw. The turn is another spade. It's the four spades. He checks over to me once again. And this is a spot that I elect to check back just because I would hate to get raised and fold out all my equity. And we also have a pretty good hand. The river is another ace. So I'm feeling way more confident about my pair of kings. Eddie decides to throw in a bet. And I actually contemplate raising for a little bit, but it's going to be hard to target a certain hand, maybe a jack. So I just make the call. He says I'm good, and we scoop in another one. After the past few hands with Eddie, he announces that he's heading after me, and he opens up the action to 35 on the hijack. I decide to put in the raise being on the button, and I have 8-5 suited. I raise it up to $100. Sean decides to flat call the 100, and action folds back around to Eddie. As you guys can see, Eddie's hand... And his previous play, I'm sure you can maybe guess what he is about to do. Eddie is a absolute savage and moves all in with seven deuce. And obviously, I cannot make this call. I fold and Sean folds as well. And Eddie scoops a pretty good pot with seven deuce. Well played. In the next hand, we look down at pocket nines in the plus two position. We open up the action to 35 in Derek, who just sat down. He, I believe this is literally his first hand that he played. He three bets to $105. Action does fold around to me, and I think there is only one real way to proceed in this hand. 
Being Derek's first hand, uh, he, I don't think he's ever really doing this that light. So I decided to just make the call and we're off to see a flop heads up out of position. So the flop isn't the worst one in the world. We definitely could ask for some worse ones. The flop comes down jack high with two clubs. We do not have a club in our hand, but I'm going to be checking my whole range over the Derek. And I expect him to be C-betting on this board most of the time, which this time is no different. Derek throws out a bet of $85, and for that price, don't want to raise, definitely don't want to fold. We decide to make the call, and we're off to see a turn. The turn's pretty good. It shouldn't have changed much. If I was ahead on the flop, I should still be ahead when the four rolls off. I go ahead and check it over to him, and this time he checks it back. So now I'm almost always certain I have the best hand. The river rolls off an eight, and now I almost always think I have the best hand here. But the thing is, is what am I going to get called by if I do bet? So I decide to check, and hopefully he can bluff. He says ace high, and we are good. Pretty uneventful, but happy to take it down. In this next hand, we are in the plus one position with queens. Literally premium after premium in this session. We open up the action to $35. We see a call in three other spots, so we're going to be going four ways to a flop, which obviously isn't the most ideal outcome with queens. The flop is interesting. The flop is 10-4-7, but it's a monotone board. We do not have a club in our board, but we can still get value from an array of draws or any 10x holding. I put in a c-bet of $65. Ivan decides to fold, and Justin, who just recently lost a massive pot, snap raises me to $300. Action does fold back around to me, and here's a spot. He is around $250 behind, and once again, I, would he ever really do, be doing this with a flush? I think the answer is no. If he somehow woke up with a set, I'll just give him a late Christmas present, because I think the only one real option here is to go all in. There's not going to be a lot of turn cards that we'll like out of position, so why not just put the money in now? If he has his beat, he has his beat. I jam all in for around $250 more, I think like $550 effective. And he does decide to make the call, as I figured. Yeah, smoke him. Look at all the outs he had. Zero. I'm leaving. Happy that we faded the array of outs on the turn, and we scoop in another big pot. In the sex hand, there's a limp pot to me, and I look down at seven deuce of clubs in the small blind. I simply just could not help myself. I decided to put five more dollars in, and we're off to see a flop where we have absolutely nothing. The reason I called is because I saw Eddie was in the hand, and I am just super eager to get him back at least once so the action checked around on the flop and now sean decides to lead the five on the turn for a smaller sizing relative to the bets he's been doing for the session he throws out 20 and we do see a call from the player in the two seat i decide to race it to 125 just because i think i'm the most likely person to have a five the way the hands been played and they both fold it wasn't as savage as eddie's bluff but hey it is still seven deuce in this next hand, there's two lumps to me, and I'm on the button with ace-queen suited. I race it up to $70, and this bet doesn't get too far. Derek in the small blind decides to make the call. Sean in the big blind decides to make the call. And the two-seat decides to make the call as well. So we're going four ways to a flop in position. The flop is pretty good. The flop comes down to king, five, six, all spades. We have the ace of spades, but unfortunately for us, action doesn't check to me. The small blind checks, the big blind checks. An action sound the cutoff where he decides to jam all in for $400. The graphics will update in a little bit. Action sound on me, and this is a bit of an annoying spot. We are just certainly not getting the right price in order to draw. As of right now, I just am obviously beat with ace high. And there's still two players behind me to act that are extremely deep. If I'm definitely not just going to be flat calling this, I'm either going to be racing to isolate. But with that being said, the two players behind me especially Sean, he tends to be maybe a little bit sticky. So it's a bit unfortunate that I raised preflop, but I actually decided to let this one go. And uh, yeah, not to be results oriented, but we did have fine equity against his exact holding. It was probably the weakest hand that would have taken this line. But nice hand, and we're off to see another one. In this next hand, we decide to play 510 without a mandatory straddle. So I open up the action to $30 in the plus one position. I should have gone a little bit bigger just considering how deep we all are but it is what it is. It doesn't really matter. The button decides to make the call, and we also see a call from the player in the big blind, as you guys all know, is Eddie. Going three ways to a flop where we absolutely are sun running. <laughs> we flop a flush with an open-ended flush redraw. Even though we have so much of the board locked up, we can still target a queen or maybe a king or ace of clubs. So I decide to put in a c-bet on the smaller side. I throw out a $50 c-bet, but unfortunately for us, as you guys can see their exact holdings, not much of anything. 
I showed the table one time, and we're off to a new one. In this next hand, Eddie opens up the action to $30. I am in the hijack with two tens. I decide to three bet to $100 trying to play this pot heads up in position. It does fold back around to Eddie, and Eddie decides to make the call. This is exactly what I wanted. We're going heads up to a flop, which I'm almost certain I have the best hand. The flop's absolutely miserable. The flop is ace-king-8. He checks it. I decide to check it back. The turn shouldn't have changed much. He decides to check it. Don't know what I can target. I check it back. The river, though, is very interesting. The river's a king. So now, he decides to check it once again. At this point, I think his hand is pretty face up. If he had a hand such as like a pseudo connector like Broadway, he definitely would have tried to put in a bluff on a previous street. He definitely would have bet an ace on a previous street. And now that there's another king on the board, it makes him less likely to have a king. If he has jacks or queens that he slow played, which I think is very unlikely, you know, so be it. But I think what he's most likely to have is a smaller pocket pair. So with that being said, when he checks it over me one more time, I go for a very thin value. I throw out $50 and he shrugs and decides to call it off. I showed the 10s and our read on the situation was spot on. Unfortunately, this was our last hand of the night. We decide to cash out, hit the cage for what is one of my biggest two five wins of my life. <laughs> 